God is a God of emotions and our right, emotions right, are right, very right. real. They can't always be trusted, but they are very real. And we see right. in the Psalmist, David's like, why have you forsaken me? Where are you? But you are holy and I trust right. you. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And so right. I feel that sometimes even in these big choices, but also in just parenting a son yeah. who's a senior in high school of God, this is real hard. I feel like I'm losing like my baby. Um, <laughs> But you know what? I want to choose gratefulness and I want to choose because it changes the position of our heart. I like to think like if we're chasing what the world says is success, yes. it's just, it's like shifting sand. Yeah. I mean, oh, one right. day you're doing this ministry, everyone's like, you're amazing. And then they're like, oh, now you have to do this. And so your success just went down. Yeah. But if we're women who are committed to chasing faithfulness, yes. right. and I'm going to chase faithfulness. So your faithfulness looks different than my faithfulness. Right. Yeah. What God's called you to looks way right. different than the way he's called me to. Yep. So I'm going to chase what you've asked me to do. Yeah. Right. You know, I was, you know, reading this book and they were talking about the ministry of Jesus. And we see the three years of his life. Right. He lived 30 years right. in the ordinary. The anonymous years. Yeah. 30 years yeah. building things. Yep. 30 years showing up to dinner every night with his family. And, you know, a lot of times you're like, oh, look at the success of, you know, Jesus healed all these people. And these are great things, obviously. But also we're like, Man, Jesus was faithful for That's 30 right. years that we right. don't know about. That's yeah. right. And so I think there's so much, even when you don't talk about how we can be grateful. And it's way easier to be grateful when you're, we talked about this, when you're in your lane, mm -hmm. when you're faithful to what God has called you to do, yeah. instead of being like, you know what, success for me means my life looks just like Lori's. Mm -hmm. Well, that's just not gonna happen. Mm -hmm. right. It's not who I am. Yeah. It's not how God made me. Mm -hmm. Right. So I'm always thinking, Jamie, chase faithfulness. Yes. Yeah. Just chase faithfulness. But you know what's so great about faithfulness too? It's that we start to ask honest questions to God. When you're faithful to God and you are submitted to his will, you you kind of begin to like open up in those intimate spaces. You know, I remember like early on in my faith, I was like, I'm not asking God for patience. <laughs> oh no, I'm not asking for all the little fruits. I just want joy, okay? But as I grow in my faith, I'm like, no, no, I want the fullness of God. Yes. No, I, I want all of it. I'm not leaving any scrap. I'm not leaving not one little thing behind. And I'm going to ask him intent questions, intimate questions. And I'm going to say, Lord, what do you need me to set down? What do I need to let go of? I don't want to let go of nothing. I love my life, okay? <laughs> what do I need to let go of? In what places, Lord, would you have me be uncomfortable because you want to reveal something or break something or renew something in me? And... Like that, like that, it's when you said faithfulness, I'm like, when you're faithful, you're willing to change. You, I look, I think about my marriage. I'm like, man, I'm faithful to you, bro. But I, these words of affirmations are weird though. They are weird. I don't want to do that. But what do you, I'm, I'm loyal to you and I want to figure out how I can love you better. It's uncomfortable for me, but I will do it because I love you. Jesus, I love you. What do you need me to change and get uncomfortable about to do that? Yeah. Like that's the faithfulness. That's you know, nice. I have a similar story to yours. I didn't go to the hood, though. We just went to Katy, Texas. <laughs> Which is <laughs> not the hood. The hood. <laughs> I just clarified, not the hood. Yeah. Um, but it was very uncomfortable for me. Yeah. It was, I obviously have a great church here in Dallas. My parents are pastors and Ethan and I were very happy here. And he felt like God told him change. And I did not feel the same thing. I was like, <laughs> that's cute. Nope, uh -huh. not happening. <laughs> and honestly, I don't know if you face this too, but people are like, well, why would you ever go to that when you have so much here to be grateful for. Right. Yeah. And they start almost questioning, like, why would you ever downgrade exactly. to do that? Because mm. you have so much here that you could be grateful for. Your life here is so great. Yeah. And really what they see is the comfort of your life. Mm -hmm. yeah. And Ethan early on just felt like the Lord said, what are you after? Mm -hmm. Are you after comfort or are you after transformation? Uh -huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I just That's was good. like, uh, uh, you answer that. You go with that one. <laughs> but it was my question too. Am I going after comfort? And what you just said too is, wow. it's a generational blessing. Yeah. When we yeah. step That's out good. and say, I'm going to be grateful and I'm going to do the will of God, even though it doesn't make sense, even though people might be saying, do you not, I, why can't you just be grateful where you are? Be content with where you are. And you're like, I don't know what God's doing. Like he's just telling us to go. So we're going to go and we're going to see. It's not that I'm not content. It's that I'm on mission with God. Mm -hmm. And so he has a different course than we understand. Yeah. And so then we go. And for you, all your boys, they're well equipped for where they're pastoring, right? right? Yeah. And my kids are still young, but our very first church baptism, the first three people we baptized were my three older kids. Aww. And it's like, the generation yeah. oh, of that one cool. obedience for yeah. us to move mm -hmm. across town and to plant a church when it was no longer about comfort or convenience. It was about life transformation. Right. And it was for me and it was for 
my kids. And That's it was beautiful. for those in Houston. And it's it's so much beyond. And so now I'm not going, beautiful. can I be grateful right here? It's not about being content where we are. It's about, are you on mission with mm-hmm. God? Yeah. And you can be content through the whole journey. You know, are you thriving or are you striving to prove something? Mm-hmm. Are you going after it, you know? And I think that's what really had to shift in my heart because my whole world changed. Ethan's was gotten better at what it felt like. He felt like he got a promotion. I felt like I got a demotion. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, what are you doing to me? You know? And I just see now... I wouldn't trade anything yeah. Yeah. for what my kids are experiencing, yeah. Yeah. for the blessing that they have, for the life transformation that we hear that. about, like the people, like there's this one older man that I'm just so obsessed with right now because <laughs> he's been so hard hearted and every week he gets softer and softer mm. and softer. And that's why we moved to Houston. Yeah. And it's like, well, duh, that makes sense, yeah. you know? And I just think that's gratitude. Yeah. I can find that. Yeah. You know, y'all are talking about big things like moving, right. and starting <laughs> churches and big things. I was telling Lori today, I have a senior in high school oh. Oh. and it's, I feel like every day is a mix of sorrow and excitement. Yeah. Like oh. I am excited for what's to come and I'm sad right. for what we're losing. But as you guys are talking, I'm sitting over here and I'm getting a little convicted even of like, mm-hmm. where am I grateful for even the 17 years that my son has lived in our home? Am I grateful for tomorrow? Am I grateful that 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 he's going right. off? And I think I'm gonna change a little bit of my language when I go home <laughs> I a little that. bit. Aww. And I am gonna still, I mean, God is a God of emotions and our right, emotions right, are right, very right. real. They yeah. can't always yeah. be trusted, but they are very real. And we see right. in the Psalmist, David's yeah. like, why have you forsaken me? Where are you? But you are holy and I trust right. you. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And so right. I feel that sometimes even in these big choices, but also in just parenting a son yeah. who's a senior in high school yeah. of God, this is real hard. I feel like I'm losing like my baby. Yeah. Um, but you know what? I want to choose gratefulness and I want to choose because it changes the position of our heart that even in the midst of sorrow for what has been a family of six, we're always going to be a family of six right. and then right. seven and then eight and then nine, right. like you told me this morning in the car, yeah. but there is change upon us, you know, and change is uncomfortable and change is hard. Um, but even in those parenting moments, I want to switch that from not focusing on my sorrow and my yeah. grief, but focusing on God, I'm, you're so good and you're so kind to give me this son that I've been his mom for 17 years. Yeah. And I'll be his mom tomorrow if you're willing um, and to find gratefulness in that. Yeah. At TBN, our mission is to use every available means to reach as many individuals and families as possible with the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for helping make the gospel of grace go around the world. And it's because of you that partner with us that this ministry continues. God bless you.